end phase microinverters are everywhere. Sol is the safest, smartest option for solar. But here's the truth. They don't always tell you some of the stuff and the tech that saves panels from shade, also makes your system a little harder to maintain, and sometimes costs a little more than you expect. Today, we're gonna to dig deep, unlocking the real pros, the hidden risks, and whether Enphase is right for your home in 2025. Let's start with what makes Enphase stand out. Panel level independence. Each solar panel has its own microinverter. So if one panel is shaded, the rest keep working. So no system-wide drop-off. Monitoring is down to each panel. You have real-time visibility in a performance hourly, weekly, and yearly. You have a 25-year warranty that aligns nicely with your panel's lifespan. And that's unmatched in the inverter space. Most inverter warranties fall in the 10 or 12 year range. A few brands do advertise 25 years, but here's the fine print. These are really structured with the expectation of a midlife replacement, not a true 25 year coverage. End phase microinverters are built for safety. They convert DC to AC right under the panel. So there's no high voltage DC cables running across your roof and down into your home. Let's look at reliability. N-phase microinverters are engineered to last. No fans, stainless poly polymer casing rated for up to 185 Fahrenheit and away from direct sunlight under the panels. Their failure rate is as low as 0.05%. That's seriously low. And independent sources, when they've eyeballed it, they say you have one in about 800 failing in the first two years versus string inverters which fail one in about 300. That sounds bulletproof but there is a cache. On a system with 30 panels, the odds of at least one microinverter failing over 25 years approaches 15%. So you will have one inverter failing every seven to nine years. But the impact of the failure is lower. Only one panel drops up, you really don't feel it, and maintenance calls happen, take a couple of days and you're done. Nothing like a systemic failure when a string inverter fails and your entire system goes down. So the advantages clearly are system-wide monitoring, flexibility, and if you've got roofs which have got funky angles, their shade, you have plans to expand later, in phase really shines. They are built if you want independence, you want upgrade friendly system, and you're looking for really slick monitoring at a panel level, you have trouble with shade, and, you, and you're looking for flexibility like pausing production from a single panel, for example, for maintenance or an emergency. A lot of built-in flexibility. All that is completely non-existent with string inverters. So what about the downsides? Cost and complexity, essentially. But the upfront costs of microinverters are generally pricier because you pay for a full microinverter under each panel versus one single string one. But the good news is if you work with somebody like me, I can get you N-phase microinverters at comparable prices to string inverters. So that cost disadvantage, it gets mitigated. If you're looking for a coach, just email me solar at mysolarhome.us, visit my website mysolarhome.us or call 609-908-3700 for a free quote. The second trade-off with N-phase microinverters is the efficiency loss when you add batteries. Converting DC to AC at each panel and then potentially back to DC for the home battery and then DC to AC from the battery for your home adds a little bit of energy loss versus direct DC path for string inverters and DC coupled batteries. The maintenance complexity, that involves swapping a single string inverter on your garage versus replacing a rooftop inverter under the panel, especially maybe on a hot summer day. Of course, the counter to this is that you have AC connectivity from your roof to your home. You don't need a specialized solar technician to swap that microinverter. Your local, your local electrician, he could do it snapping off the microinverter and putting a new one, very easy, but you have to be on the roof. Now with a DC string inverter, you will have to wait and you will have to take a tech. Failure frequencies are very low with microinverters and failures don't stop your system, but they still happen a little more often because you have more of them. 
So is end phase right for you? Here's where end phase is a home run. Shaded roofs, roof segments with different directions, multiple arrays, homeowners who value real-time panel-level data, and who want the safest possible rooftop set up with distributed AC instead of DC. It's really good for the set it and forget it kind of installation built for long-term reliability. But it may not be smart money if you have a simple unshaded roof, one single rectangular array, you'll probably be able to get by with much tighter budgets. So when upfront costs matter more, you could look at string inverters. Also, adding batteries later might be easier with string inverters. And if you're looking at conversion losses, that's another thing to be concerned about. So here's the final takeaway. N-phase microinverters are powerful, flexible, and safe, but not universally superior. They're best for homes that benefit from panel independence and advanced monitoring. But for a straightforward, low-cost install of a future-backed solar battery system, other options might serve you better. So if you're comparing Enphase versus SolarEdge versus Tesla versus Franklin, check out my side-by-side -side battery and inverter breakdown in my previous video. Do hit the like and subscribe button and let me know your comments below. I reply to each one of them. Till we see you in the next time. Thank you for watching.